folks, welcome to Calvin's Got Game. Today I'm trying to get on with my games that I enjoy playing that start with a certain letter of the alphabet. Uh, been a while since I've done one. My last video started with the letter S. Um, so, I want to tell you about the comments that I got that people enjoy playing uh, games that start with the letter S that they enjoy. Well, let's start out with Jetman 1989. He's, they say that they love the game Spirit Island. And I don't know much about Spirit Island, never played it, but I do know that your spirit's trying to keep these people off the island and running them off. So I do know that that's, that's kind of what it's about. Then Ludwig misses Spirits of the Wild. Never played this one either, not sure what it's about, but I'm sure it's a pretty good game if Lud Ludwig misses enjoys it. So you might want to check that one out for S. Mark Patuka, Sagrada. Now, I have played Sagrada. You're building a stained glass window. It's a fun game. I think if you enjoy that kind of stuff, tile placement, uh, kind of like, in, or this one's dice placement, kind of like in uh, Azul. I think you might like Sagrada. Longtime Niners fan. There's his Scout. Never played Scout, but I think it's a ladder climbing game. I'm not sure. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I haven't played it myself. Would like to. So Scout is longtime Niners fan. Aaron Nunley says Super Big Boggle is something fun for them. Now, <clears throat> it is probably a mass market game, but that's okay. If that's what you like, that's what you like. Don't let anybody tell you not to enjoy mass market games. You have to buy these big, expensive uh, campaign games or Kickstarter games. Enjoy what you enjoy. All right, let's get on with our games that start with the letter T. My number 10 is The Crew Search for Planet Nine. The crew's a trick-taking game. You have to do it in a certain order. You gotta work together. It's a cooperative trick-taking game. That's the fun part. And you have so many missions that you can go on. <clears throat> and you do them in order and things start accumulating or getting harder as you go. And that's, that's fun, you know? I like having more uh, issues coming along that you need to overcome to complete a game. But my number 10 is the crew, Search for Planet Nine. Number nine is the river. The river is a worker placement game. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of a family weight worker placement game. Uh, I think that if you want to get into worker placement, this is probably where you need to start if you haven't ever played any. The river is very family friendly, friendly and also enjoyable. So my number nine is the river. Number eight is tapestry. Tapestry has some um, tech tracks or tracks that you're trying to move up on and you're doing certain things. Um, it's an interesting game. I enjoy it. I've played it a few times. I haven't played as much as I want, but I do enjoy tapestry. So if doing that kind of stuff where your tech tree or moving up uh, these, these uh, tracks interest you, by all means, check out my number eight, Tapestry. Number seven is Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. Now, <clears throat> I like this game basically solo because I believe the, the uh, AI in this game, who you're playing against, the, the uh, computer, if you will, um, is so good that it just makes it so fun to play. Um, I enjoy um, Terraforming Mars Area's Expedition for that reason. It's, it's not as grandiose as Terraforming Mars, the big game, but it's quicker. To me, it's more fun. So I enjoy it, and that's why Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition is my number seven. Number six is Trains. Trains is a deck building game, but you're also trying to build routes on a board, trying to get to train stations and, and towers and things, and you're building these things on the board, and you're trying to score as many points as possible, and you have all kinds of trains that you can, that you can get, commuter and bullet trains. <clears throat> Fabulous game. If you like deck building, which I do, I enjoy it very much. That's why my number six is Trains. Number five is Tales of Arabian Nights. Tales of Arabian Nights. It's in the world of Sinbad. <clears throat> it's kind of open world. You go around, you start out, you have a mission that you can do, a little small mission. But at the beginning of the game, you set your fortune and fame to a certain level. But there, you know, the level is decided by the game. So it may be 20 and you do 10 fame, two fortune, or 10 fortune. So you do and they add up to 20. But once you complete whatever mission or the uh, goal you have set, you win the game. 
there's a lot of things that'll take it away from you. There's a lot of things that give it to you. What you think would give you um, fame points may not. It may give you fortune. Um, and also, sometimes you have decision making. It's got a huge book. It's a storybook game. Huge book. Sometimes making the decision you think is the right one doesn't give you the best um, treasure or the best prize or whatever. Guys, I enjoy that kind of world where you can do anything you want. You go anywhere you want. But be careful because you could be turned into a toad. You could be turned lost in the forest. You could be all kinds of things happen to you, diseased, all kinds of things. But if you like that open world kind of style, I recommend Tales of Arabian Nights. That's why it's my number five. Number four, everybody wondered where this game was when I did the Q video. Well, the Quack, uh, Quacks of Quinlanburg has a V in front of it, and Board Game Geek ranks it, uh, puts it listed in the T's, not the Q's. So that's why the Quacks of Quinlanburg is my number four, because it starts with a T. Guys, I love Quacks of Quinlanburg. Love pulling chips out of a bag, right? And placing them on the board, pushing my luck, trying not to explode my pot, and then buying some great tokens to put back in my bag. It's just a fabulous game. If you like push your luck games, I really think that you would enjoy the Quacks of Quinlanburg. That's why it's my number four. Number three, the Taverns of Teeth and Thaw. Teeth and no, I can't pronounce it. Teeth and Thaw. I don't know. Anyway, the game is fabulous. I enjoy it. It's a worker placement. You're making beer. You're hiring people. You're doing things that you do in a tavern. Guys, if you like that kind of game, you want to play that kind of game, the Taverns of Teeth, Teeth and Thaw is for you. My number two, The Adventures of Robin Hood. <clears throat> Guys, The Adventure of Robin Hood is a really interesting game. It comes with this lovely storybook. Uh, that teaches you the game as you go through. You're reading the book, you're playing the game. When you do certain things, it tells you what happens. Um, it's an adventure uh, game for sure. And it's a cooperative game, which I enjoy. So you're moving around the board, doing certain missions. Um, I really enjoyed it. So I think if you like that kind of game, adventure, cooperative game, you would enjoy The Adventures of Robin Hood. Number one. The Rise of Queensdale. Guys, The Rise of Queensdale was fantastic. My wife and I played this game probably for two or more weeks straight. We just left it out on the table, came every night to the table, played a session or two, and had just the most amount of fun. It comes with this little bitty plunger, I mean a tiny, tiny plunger, and you push it down on the board, pull these tiles out, put new tiles in. Um, it's a worker play. <laughs> excuse me. It's a worker placement um, game that um, it's a legacy style game as well. You're pulling cards out. You're doing things. You're taking stuff off the board in the next session. Guys, the Rise of Queensdale is fantastic. Um, if you never played it, you might want to seek it out. But I would say buy a new copy because you know there are things that can be done to the game. So I found mine at a, at a used game store. It was in shrink. I bought it cheaply. It wasn't very expensive. And I heard the Dice Tower talk about Tom Vassell and them talk about it. And let me tell you, it was worth the investment of $19 and something to play with my wife uh, over a two-week period of just having a blast. So guys, if that interests you, the Rise of Queensdale is for you. Guys, I want to tell you, thanks for watching, but first of all, if you have a T, a game that starts with a T, game that you really enjoy, put it down in the comments. I'll mention it on the next video. Guys, I thank you for watching, and remember what I tell you, get a board game to the table, spend time with your friends and family, and thank you again for watching Calvin's God Game.